Hi, it's Pete. Thanks so much to everyone who wished me well with my cold. I don't know how I sound today. I just want to do a short video so too, too much time doesn't go by. I kind of want to see what I sound like with my cold. I actually don't feel very good at all this morning. I didn't feel quite as bad yesterday, so hope it's hopefully it's, it's peaking right now and this is the worst of it. I think it's just a cold. Sore throat, cold sore. Doesn't seem like COVID. I don't know though. Oh, so I'll, I'll just go over what I read yesterday. I just sat and stared off into space. I did a little bit of reading. I finished the sixth book in the Valentine series, Valentino series. It's called Indigo. Um, and then I messed around on the Hoopla app and read comic books for some reason. Feeling under the weather always makes me think of comics, I guess. Uh, I read this really stupid comic I never thought I'd read, but it actually wasn't that bad. It's this thing, Star Trek slash Planet of the Apes, The Primate Directive. <clears throat> it's five issues. This is a collection of it. Um, it was actually not that bad. It was a stupid idea, but... I wonder if I could see the credits here or if it's going to be too small to read. It was by, written by Scott and David Tipton and drawn by Rachel Stott with colors by Charlie Kirchhoff. What I liked about it was Planet of the Apes, the original movie came out in 68. Star Trek was on the uh, air then and they made the intelligent decision to make it really make Star Trek stuff really retro like the Klingons are the old Klingons from the original series they don't have the ridges uh, the, the plot is basically the Star Trek half of the plot is basically lifted right from uh, season 2 I did research here season 2 episode 19 A Private Little War where the Klingons are deciding to arm uh, uh, inferior civilization. There's a dimension. The Klingons have got some kind of dimension device that is really kind of dropped as a as a plot hole where they've got this advanced technology. It's never explained where the technology comes from. So the Enterprise goes after the Klingons into this other uh, other uh, reality, which is the Planet of the Apes reality, and fits right in with the continuity between towards the end of Beneath Planet of the Apes and just touches on the beginning of Escape from the Planet of the Apes. Kind of blended together very nicely there. The Klingon's plan make no sense. They're somehow they're because they've the Federation and the Klingons have been forced into this treaty again um, <clears throat> by the Orga Organians, Orgonians? Organians, who uh, don't want them to fight. So the Klingons have decided to break the, the, the treaty by not colonizing anymore in our universe, but going to a different universe that they found for, through some alien portal. And uh, so uh, Kor, the Klingon, uh, who was the first Klingon captain in the first Klingon episode, Aaron of Mercy, season one, episode 26, or 16, can't read my handwriting. Anyway, Aaron of Mercy. Kor uh, goes to this, goes to the planet of the apes, which is Earth. Uh, better put spoilers on this one. And starts arming the gorillas. But, and this is why it makes no sense. Now, in Aaron of Mercy, I mean, in uh, A Private Little War, where the Klingons did the same thing, they're, they're, they're arming one side in a peaceful one peaceful tribe against another peaceful tribe on this small planet so they can take it over but the, the gorillas are already violent and the gorillas already have rifles so they just give them a little better rifles I'm not sure what the plan is and I guess they're going to colonize this other dimension of space so the, Organi or the Oregonians won't uh, Organians, I'm going to mess it up either way uh, anyway so that that was where they stole that plot from and It was okay. It was. I guess I'm. I'm glad I re read it. It was five issues. It seemed like a really stupid idea, so I didn't have uh, 
much hope for it going in, so I can't really complain. It was just something to sit there and read while I was uh, semi-hallucinating. Um, the characters are kind of given short shrift, the, the Star Trek characters. They they definitely took Taylor in a different direction. The character, the Charlton Hissing character of Taylor, they... It was kind of like an extended episode uh, where everybody has like a tiny little bit to do, like Sulu has a little bit to do. Chekhov gets conked on the head, of course. Um, Uhura has a tiny little bit to do. Could have done more with her. I, and um, I think the, the Planet of the Apes characters were a little better written, especially Cornelius and Zira. Um, and there's not too much with... Uh, what was, it? what was his name? Who's the ora orangutan's name? Dr. Zayas. It had five essays. Since it was originally a five-part comic, Dana Gould, that comedian who's a huge nerd in a good way, who loves Planet of the Apes and likes Star Trek a lot, wrote a different essay for each of the original issues. So there's five essays on that, which I actually enjoyed reading as, as much as the comic. Uh, the art looks pretty cool. It was fun. That's all I have to say. I wanted to get on here and say something because of uh, the poll I did yesterday where I jokingly said, okay, so when should I put up my I'm leaving booktube thing? I, hopefully people know I was kidding. I think most people know I was kidding, but uh, just in case there was any doubts, I thought I'd do another video today. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to stay inside again. I don't feel like doing anything. I'm going to sit in the sunlight, heal up, read. Uh, I've picked other comics to read. I'm going to, I don't know about this one. We'll see. Uh-oh. I lost the app. We'll see how this one goes. The Fourth World by Jack Kirby. Uh, back in the 70s, Jack Kirby, uh, um, DC finally hired Jack Kirby away from Marvel by giving him his own set of books, and they also gave him Jimmy Olsen to take over, which was suffering, I think, in the ratings to create his his own mythology, you know, with Apocalypse and, and the Eternals and Mr. Miracle and all that stuff. And I haven't read the whole thing. I read bits of it here and there, but I just want to see how this goes What what Jack Kirby's treatment of Superman and that part of the universe was like. So maybe I'll look at that today and get back to my real reading a little bit. And that's it. So we'll talk again. I hope you're all doing well. If I can hit this button, I'll get out of here.